Shore is calling. <laughs> is there a seashore? <laughs> the Jersey Shore is calling. <laughs> Sounds of the sea. Jay, it's eight o'clock. As the sun pulls away from the shore and our ship slowly sinks in the west, we have managed to secure our lifeboat. Here in the lifeboat, you will find a respite, a haven from how it is and a bit of how it was, and how it will hopefully be again. For the next hour, sit back and Join us for music, conversation. There's always room on the lifeboat. So come on over and float around. Last summer, we were doing the jazz drive-in. Here outside of Jay's Place recording studio on Historic Music Row. Hi, atop Music Row. In fact, Jay, we're... We're pretty high on the row, aren't we? We're right at the edge. Yes, we are. But we were doing that to, to stay sharp and keep the music and creativity going because as musicians in Nashville, we've always relied on the interaction, drawing from mutual experience and comedy and history. So here we are. Here we are. We're stashed at Jay's place, properly distanced. If you notice, we have our emergency sneeze guard. We could um, easily have a salad bar here. How about a nice dolphin song right now?
from a Sydney Green Street movie. <laughs> which Green Dolphin Street. Green Dolphin Street. Which, which movie? Uh, Green Dolphin Street, I believe. That was the name of the movie. I movie. believe so. Sydney Green Street. <laughs> <laughs> he always wore like the giant white suit and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was cool. Looked like he had just eaten a hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have hoagies down. We had hoagies where we're from, right? You know, exactly. We, we had hoagies down here. Subs. Subs. Hoagies. But we had hoagies, man. Because you had hoagie mix. I'm from Philly. Jay, what? You're from Connecticut, Connecticut. Right? We had grinders. Grinders. Woo! Did you have speedies? <laughs> no, no speedies. That was in New York State. But uh, yeah, hoagies, man. And, and you could buy stuff called hoagie mix. Oh my god! And you spread yeah. it on it. It was like a mixture of like peppers and onions and stuff. Yeah, like Jersey Mike's has something similar now. Do they? Do they? Yeah. Well, little we'll shout out. Some Jersey stuff. Little <laughs> shout out. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's we're here. We're at the lifeboat. This is um, Captain Vern. We got the engineer Scotty behind the board. Uh, engineer Scotty, can you talk to us? Oh, oh excellent. from the depths excellent. of the hull. Um, how's the, <laughs> how's the engine, Scotty? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you much. I'm um, I'm First Officer Yudkin, and um, <laughs> and we're just gonna chill on the lifeboat. Uh, chill with us, um, Jay. What do you think? We should get into a little Sonny Rollins. Yeah, so we got a couple Sonny Rollins. We're on a uh, semi jazz mission. We're gonna yeah, semi jazz. <laughs> we're gonna float through things uh, tonight. Who knows? We? we don't really have a plan, but we're gonna see. That's the good part of it. Uh, yeah. We'll float through musical genres. We'll talk stuff. We'll get into some uh, musical history, maybe. Stop for a drink. We're not driving. <laughs> we have our sneeze guard so we can have a salad bar. You know, it's really great. Um, yes. Now, Sonny Rollins was, was the cat who quit at the height of his career to go practice under the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Wow. And he succeeded. Feeling groovy. <laughs> That's the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. That's the other title to that song, right? Fifty mm-hmm. Ninth Street. Well, we could do. Uh, he did a tune called Tenor Madness, right? He did, but of course we changed it. We changed it. We can do. Uh, <laughs> we can. Oh, that's right. Because we, yeah, we were we were talking about blending it with like Commander Cody and the Lost Planet. Right. Airman we we stuff. were thinking of a mashup. That Hot Rod Lincoln stuff. Yeah. And, um, with. Uh... So yeah, so maybe like the uh, the Texas Six shuffly groove, right? To go along right. with something. What B flat. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Do that a couple times. One more time with that.
little mashup Sweet. right there. Burn. Very nice. What what piano are you, is this you're playing? This is uh, the Yamaha yeah. Concert Grand C7. About what year? It's about, uh, I would say it's about 20 years old. From the lowest <laughs> to the <laughs> highest. Dude, it has so every high. note. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're awfully high. What a deal. Uh, I think that <laughs> something that we'd like to do every week is to, you know, talk about one particular artist, one particular musical influence, yeah. and, you know, for for you and me, I know me for sure. You know, Horace Silver has just always been a really cool. Horace influence. Silver. Horace Silver. From the Cape Verdean Islands. So they say. He's a Cape Verdean. And you know, I was. I didn't have a lot of jazz early on, and um, this guy that I was working with named Juke Logan, who was a, we were working with, with Leon Russell's band, and Juke, John Juke Logan was the harmonica player. Always wore a three-piece suit, oh, and, he wow. had a, and he had a double stack of Fender amps for his harmonica. He, oh. he, was, he was the class act. Oh, it's like a freight train of harmonica coming at you. And um, he, was dest he was determined to, to educate me. And like, we were already at the Tower of Power and stuff like that. This is like yeah. 1982. But he wanted me to know about Horace Silver and, uh, and Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers and um, uh, the Bobby Timmons and, uh, yeah. uh, and, and Winton Kelly. And uh, boy, was he right. Well, you know, that was one of my early recollections, too. I had a, a guy in a band, band leader, of course, say, hey, can you play funky like Horace Silver? I had no idea what he was talking about, so I went and started listening to Horace Silver, and he was funky. He was funky. It was that 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 kind of sixties jazz is really funky. It's uh... I mean the Bobby Timmons stuff is, is, oh, is yeah. to me is similar to Horace, but Horace was yeah. his melodies were so sweet mm. and full and rich. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's one of our favorites for sure. It's uh, and then then he went on to be uh, with the Jazz Messengers with Art Blakey. Yeah, and to me that's the that's the sound of of sixties blue note. Mm. It's it's a certain sound. You you feel is, like you're is, either in the yeah. studio or in the club. It is a sound, yeah. And it's a certain sound. And and Horace's piano was always kind of a mellow. Um, yeah, uh, he wasn't a screaming technician on piano, but he had. It always soul. sounded like an upright to me. Yeah, it like, it sounds a, like an upright piano. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and we love Horace. I mean, Steely Dan was was always crediting Horace. Oh, the old oh, that's the lick of the week with their <laughs> the lick of the week. Song my father. Oh my God! If Talk he got a father. nickel for every time that lick was played, Horace Silver would would be a zillionaire. <laughs> but they, uh, Steely Dan, attributed something called the Moo Major. Uh, I don't believe to that. Uh, a lot of stuff that they wrote, and they said that it was a a, a um, way that Horace used uh, the voicings. Wow! And and stacking his harmonies and stuff like that. And hey, I I believe it. Man. Yeah, yeah, because Ricky don't lose that number, you know. Oh my God. Ricky. And then, of course, uh... which is a song from my father. Yeah. By Horace. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. But you can steal them. two bars. You can't steal four. But they never, <laughs> they, they were like, they always credited Horace. So it was like, they oh, did. They did. Completely. Yeah. So I think we should do, let's, let's do a Horace tune. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of them. Oh you want to do, uh... hey, we could do The Preacher. The, yeah. the preacher was one that um, really? that I played yeah. with Dickie Betts, yeah. and uh, Dickie would do like a, a shuffle version of it. But uh, you've been doing a lot of church piano recently. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been doing a lot of church lately. Yeah. Which which church was it? You and Leonard? Uh, me and Leonard Wolf uh, are at uh, St. John's AME, AME. Uh, the oldest AME in Nashville, and. Uh, I'm also at Greater Bethel. Give me a shout out to the Greater Bethel community right over here on South Street, right by Music Row. Shout out. Well, this is appropriately named The Preacher.
<laughs> hey, play some of that good, uh, that incredible gospel stuff on the on the world. Oh, just for a second, you got that beautiful. Yes, right I there. do have that. Let's see. Say it was you know Sunday morning and uh, Sunday morning and Sunday morning and and that's what you had, man. so many places that we've played ah, well, over the years. Yeah, we have to space them out we do. between shows. There's been too many. It's been, I mean, in Nashville alone, oh. when you think about, uh, okay, over the last uh, almost 40 years. Almost 40 years. That, uh, that we've been playing clubs in this town and the ones that have come and gone. Oh, unbelievable. <clears throat> unbelievable. And, you know, like, like uh, um, the Sutler, of course, yeah. What it used what it used to be, and uh, oh, Douglas Corner just went down, and 
Yeah, Douglas Corner. Remember the boardwalk off of Nolan's? The board, I saw Johnny Winter. You saw Johnny Winter? The but I, it was so loud, I just stood outside, and it was so incredible, the sound. Do you remember the, the place? In the parking lot. Of, it's a Mexican restaurant now. Uh, remember the place off of, of Highway 100 called the Cockeyed Camel? Ah, played there, yeah. And uh, there with Albert you. King played there. Oh, Got to see him there. Wow. And, uh, but there was, um, there was a great place in New York City where I had a band in, in Jersey way back when. Our, it was called RD1. <clears throat> and uh, we became the house band at the Lone Star Cafe. It wasn't a great place. It was iconic. It was iconic. I played there twice. Once with one of your fiddle friends. Who's that? Vassar Clemens. You played with, wow. I did, well, I didn't play with him. We opened up for him at the Lone Star. And was Vassar's he band was so like the humble. Dregs and people like that? Oh, it was Deuce, uh, Steve Davidowski. It was Davidowski. Yeah. Anyways, that was the first time. And the second time was with Johnny Paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Take this job. Now, job playing it. in the middle of New York City. Uh -huh. I, I never had seen a sushi restaurant in my life. That was the first time I ever saw. Walked out of the Lone Star, took a right or a left, found the first sushi restaurant, and watched a guy. Never heard of sushi in my life. Really? I was, you know, I was 22 or whatever. And watched a guy carve a carnation out of a piece of flounder. Nice. That was so awesome. I said, I said what? It's flounder nation, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Well, we be my, uh, the band I was in uh, became the house band there. So we were I opening know. up all these live for the Lone Star shows. As a matter of Everybody. fact, can you, uh, can you give a, a, a call up to uh, – what we're going to do uh, every week also is we're going to call out to friends, bring them in on the conversation. So yeah. if, you'll, uh, if you'll put in a phone call to uh, – to a one friend of, our, of ours. One of our buddies. And uh, yeah, so the Lone Star Cafe was on the corner of 5th Avenue and 13th Street. And um, it was, uh, it had an iguana, a giant iguana on the roof. It was on the corner, so it, it was, was overlooking. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Is that, <laughs> is that world famous Phil Roselle? Okay, man. It is. Well, that's, that, that's Jonathan. Hey, Phil. Oh, that's right. Phil's across the room. You'll have to do the talk in the Phil. Actually, you know what? I'm going to come over there. Yeah, come over here. Yeah, I can only hear one of you. Yo, Philzy. Yo, boys. After losing our collective swimmies in 2020, it's nice to be on the lifeboat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, let me get over here. I'll just sort it in the picture, whatever. So, Philzy, how you doing? Everything good? Happy New Year, baby. Happy New Year, Philzy. We're, we're sitting here talking. We're doing the, you know, the lifeboat. And uh, the lifeboat is our, our live Facebook thing that we're going to do every Sunday night. And it's just like a chill with music and conversation. And, and we want to talk about clubs that have come and gone. And uh, uh, Jay was just saying that he played the Lone Star Cafe uh, opening for Vassar and Johnny Paycheck. And um, you and I played there. Oh, my God. With uh, oh, with our band R D one, right? Yeah, with with a lot of folks, a lot of different acts through that place. Everybody from Lonnie Brooks to Johnny Paycheck to Johnny Winter. Oh uh, Sam and Dave Sam and Dave, the iconic Sam and Dave. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, you know, oh jeez, I mean I can go on and on, man. It was just uh, it was just like a musical fruit show every weekend there. Oh, Al Albert Collins. We uh, we did Albert Collins. Albert Collins, Lonnie, yeah, Lonnie Brooks, yeah, Albert Lonnie Collins. Brooks. Yeah, Albert was the dude that took his Telecaster and had his bodyguard come up to the stage, if you remember, man. And he had that 100 foot guitar chord, and he went up to the middle of Fifth Avenue, and he got his limo, and he played the solo sitting in his limo on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> Funny stuff. And uh, describe the Lone Star, Phil, to, to folks who, who, who would have never been there. Well, it was on iconic Fifth Avenue in Manhattan and 13th Street, right on the corner. Um, it was this wild kind of corner building that had a giant iguana on top of the building. Yeah. Um, what, that was, what that was made out of, we're not really too sure, but it had the... Big Texas iguana, and this yeah, this was if you remember, man, this was during the time like when 
Urban Cowboy was the big thing, like on Wall Street and everything. Yeah, and, you know, all, all the Wall Streeters would come in dressed like cowboys. It <laughs> 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 turned down to Willie Nelson and blues music. That was the truth. And I, I remember, didn't uh, didn't Jaco Pistorius come in one night we were playing? Oh. I mean, Pistorius came in one night we were playing. Uh, during soundcheck, you remember John Belushi came in that That's day. right. Oh. That's right. Oh, yeah, we're sitting there during soundcheck, and Belushi comes yeah, walking Belushi in. Came in man. And he sits down yeah. at the bar, to, oh. and, he, to, and a guy hands him a beer, doesn't even ask what he wants, just hands him the beer. And, and then the phone rings, because this is like 1980. Yeah. yeah. The phone rings behind the bar, and the bartender looks up and he hands it, just hands it to Belushi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Belushi's like in a, in, a, in running uh, garb, like he's in jogging clothes, yeah, smoking a cigarette, smoking jogging. a cigarette, <laughs> having a beer. And we were sound checking, so it was like three in the afternoon. And uh, so apparently John had wandered off the set and uh, come out for a beer, and they try and knew, they knew exactly where he was, and they called the bar. That was so funny. yeah. And evidently, man, that's where they would come out to see Sam and Dane play and kind of got, you know, where him and Ackroyd would come out and watch those right. old soul bands play there and, and, you know, and got the whole idea from the Blues Brothers thing, man. It was. And we had we had a great time yeah. playing, too. You were slamming it on electric guitar. What Did you have the Black Les Paul back then? I had the Black Les Paul back then when we were, when, when we were children, yes. Playing, and I think we were both playing through Ampeg V4s, if I remember. Oh, my goodness. It was the V4 days. Yeah, because, because we, we saw the Dixie Dregs, and Steve Morris was playing through a V4. That's right. They played the Lone Star. And they did pyrotechnics yeah. at the Lone Star. And the Lone Star, for yeah. those of you who don't realize, was just a rectangular uh, old store. And it had an incredible mezzanine that, that took yeah, out, like, the center of the mezzanine. second floor. Yeah. And you'd walk up this grand, wide stairs that was next to the stage, and you'd go up to the mezzanine. And, yeah, we saw the dregs. We were up in the mezzanine just above the stage. So you were never far from the stage. And they lit off pyrotechnics and, and basically burnt my beard off. And, uh, <laughs> and that's back when, you know, the beard was woolly and, and, and mammoth and stuff like that. But, uh, anyway... Yeah, we saw more season to V4, and, and uh, Rod Morgenstein was just on fire that night on drums. They were, man. It was incredible. But, yeah, yeah. So playing yeah, the Lone Star. Oh, yeah, and you played to the wrong side of the room. You played to the thin side of the rectangle. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you didn't play down the long angle. You played to the short wall. And, right. uh but what was nice when people like Debbie Harry walked in one night, you saw her just standing right there at the front door of wow. the stage. It was, it was kind of like right there, you know, whoever the celebrity evening that walked Celebrity the evening. It was, yeah, it was pretty uh, wild times, brother. Wild well, times. Hey, man, you guys sound great. You thanks, sound man. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, nice. Philzy, and hope nice. to see you soon. Okay, Take care, well, buddy. You guys. Love you, Jay Burns. See, see you, man. See you, man. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, the call out worked. The call out worked. And yeah. We, you know, keep Bill Roselle is one of the greatest guitar players and singers. Oh, my gosh. Songwriter. He's a great. Yeah. Uh, everything. New, yeah. Everything. He's New Jersey, too. He toured with a band called NYC back wow. in the day. And um, that was some hard rock and stuff. Wow. Then he came on down here to Country Town. Oh, well, yeah. Do, 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 do. Hey, uh, what do you say we uh, get into some uh, drink music? Um, oh. You know which one I'm talking about? This is a song. Uh, uh. <laughs> pass this one around. This is, uh, what, we, what do we call this? The poor man's? This is the poor man's champagne. champagne. Or the musician's, musician's champagne. champagne. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah. If you know it, here we go. It's 
Cold Duck Time. <laughs> New jokes? <laughs> oh. I haven't thought about the joke of the week yet. Um, I had the chord of the week, but... What was the chord of the week? The chord of the week for me is the sharp nine chord. Oh. That's a... Ooh. I so, thought Purple Haze was the first time I heard it, but I think I heard it before that. What would you hear it in? I mean, a minor and a major in the same chord makes no sense. Mm -hmm. It's the devil's interval. Mm -hmm. That's what they call the tritone, right? <laughs> well, anyways, I think, so I'm trying to remember, I think I heard it in I'm a Man by Spencer Davis. And we're... I'm a man, yes I am, and my dad. Oh, yeah. But I also, I, I, think I, heard, I think it's in a song before that even... Oh, well. Certainly not in a Burt Bacharach. He was major sevenths. Oh, wow. <laughs> My first Burt Bacharach lesson uh, ever. I just recorded with Burt. I know you did. Yeah, he was cool. Man, my first jazz lesson ever was walk on by. <clears throat> if you see me walking down the street and I start to cry. Anyways, we're what? digressing. We're digressing, yeah, that's, of that's, course. That's, that's lovely. I yeah. love it. All right, well, I, ha I, had one, I had one new joke for this week. Do it, um, and it's uh, it's just one of those music business jokes. Mm. Yeah. Here it is. Um, <laughs> do you know, Jay? Do you know why there are no banjos featured on the TV show Star Trek? What if I said I did? <laughs> and I'd say you're in the music business, and you and you know the answer to these jokes. <laughs> no, I. I think I do, but I want you to lay it on us. Why are there no banjos on the TV show Star Trek? On the on the TV show Star Trek. Because Jay, it's the future. <laughs> <laughs> the the poor misaligned banjo. The poor misaligned banjo. Come on. Hey, engineer Scotty, do you have any comments on banjos? What do you think? How you doing? How you doing, Scotty? <laughs> but otherwise you'll start a fire with it no 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 we love we love banjos we really do we're just hey you, you could poke fun at violas like violas are the butt of every orchestra joke you know the the, the viola uh, violas yeah the dreaded viola with that crazy k sign what's that k all about uh, i don't know what the special k, k. Is. it's a great big thing so <laughs> <clears throat> but they take they take the, the the hit like banjos take the hit in country music violas take the hit in orchestra music Really? Uh, so I'm told. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, that was my joke. Um, let's uh, <laughs> let's do what we, you know, we were talking about doing an arrangement on the spot. An on-the-spot arrangement. An on-the-spot arrangement. Kind of something. stuff we do in our normal day. Yeah, because here at Jay's Place Recording, you can come in here and set up. You, you probably can't see all the isolation rooms that are all over the place. You can set up, uh, what, seven people in isolation here. Yeah, total isolation. And... And cut live tracks. And when you do yes. that, when you got everybody here, 
it behooves you. You like that word? Behooves. Behooves. It behooves us to get as much work done as possible. Right. So getting five songs done in a three-hour session is normal. It's normal. Yes. And, an um, album a day. An album a day. It's no problem here in Nashville. That's true. Yeah. So um, we have to do quick arrangements. You know, a writer will come in and go, "Here's my song," <laughs> and you go, Whoa, "Okay, <laughs> that needs an arrangement." Because if we don't do it, we're not going to get done, and we won't be on schedule. And you know, we love to be on schedule. You have to be. So on the spot arranging. So I was thinking, um, here's something weird. You know the, um, you know that music that. Um, like, this would be an on-the-spot arrangement Uh-oh. or something. I know. <laughs> you know that thing when you crank the, the music box and the clown pops out of the top and scares the hell out of you? <laughs> scares every child. It's like nightmares for every Stephen, kid. Stephen Kingish. Engineer Scotty, did you get scared by a, a, mus- <laughs> a, a cranking uh, clown box when you were a kid? <laughs> Pretty terrified, he said. So, so the one that I'm thinking about, what, uh, what would it be? Uh, C? Maybe? D. D sounds good. So it's like this. It's you know you crank it up, and then you let it go. <laughs> okay, so that's the one you remember that one, right? Yes, I do. Of course, it kind of morphed into like remember remember Magic that movie Magic. That had Anthony Hopkins and the dummy oh. named Fats. Oh wow! And, uh, and Fats talked to him like this. Yeah. And and the uh, the music for the movie. I hate, I always get off on these uh, weird trains of thought. The music for the movie was Jerry. Um, oh, what was his name? Jerry Goldsmith. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah. And and the the reoccurring sound that they were using all throughout the movie was a piano that had been. Purposely put out a tune. Did you like that? Yeah. So it was like this, you know. <laughs> and it was a completely unnerving. But anyway, a fats was kind of like the thing that would jump out of the music box. So, um, <laughs> so real quickly, okay, so here's what we would do. We would say, okay, what's, uh, take out a pencil and write what chords these would right. be normally. Right, right. The one, the five, the one, da, da, da. the one to five, the one, da. the one to five, the one, da, da. and then 45. And then the, the bridge, I think it's a six minor. Okay, so here, play. Right. You got that chord. Play so, that country song. Now, right just now. play that for just a second one time. Here's a Chinese version. So now, say we want to do it something cooler. Say yes. we uh, put it in a six-eight kind of a. Our mission to change it. Mid seventies detective mode.
That's the second chord of the week, the five minor. The five, oh yeah. Five minor is a great chord. Takes you where you want to go. We only steal from the best. <laughs> yeah, it takes you where you want to go. Exactly. It takes you where you want to go. That's what we do here on the lifeboat. We go places. Yeah, so. yeah, we have to. It's the stuff that falls between the cracks. Mm-hmm. So. Ah, there it goes. Uh, how's your uh, restaurant uh, explorations been lately here around town? Well, I'll tell you, there's a few. Any that have actually ones? opened in during Nashville. the pandemic. Who are they? And I will tell you, I want to give a shout out to this place because it is absolutely fabulous. What is it? Now, I have a side motive, of course. <laughs> they have a nightclub there. Oh, okay. It's not open yet that we will be playing at. Can't wait. Because, yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to take it over, make it a jazz room with all the shout outs that I give them. It's called The Optimist. Oh, I love it. What a good name. And it's out by the old water company on on the Third Avenue over there, way past Germantown, like five blocks past Germantown, wow. and a very industrial. But the wood roasted oysters, <laughs> wow, <laughs> nice. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a seafood restaurant. Oh, okay. But they have one steak and they have one chicken, and that's it. The rest of it is seafood. It is awesome. Yeah, so shout out to the Optimist. Very unusual. I heard about it actually. My son <clears throat> Nicholas somehow scraped up a few dollars to go there and said it was great. Nice. And of course, I didn't believe him, so I had to try it, and it was <clears throat> absolutely top notch. Yeah. What about you? Oh man, just uh, take out from the from the the, the same great places. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um. And they're all great. I, I got to say, you know. Um, well, I have a, spe- you know. I mean, we have such great Mexican restaurants in oh this town. Oh, my gosh. You know, we have oh. such a great Latin population in this town. Uh, like South Nolensville and Road. We, and we both lived here when there was z- z- zero. Oh, zip. Dude, when I, okay, when I came here in 81, the only re- Mexican restaurant was. Um, Run by white people. It was on Murfreesboro Road across yeah. from La Charleston. Hacienda. La Hacienda. No, it was uh, La Fiesta. La Fiesta, of Mexican La food. La Fiesta. On Murfreesboro Road. And it was across the street from uh, Louis Aregis's. <laughs> oh, uh, let's not go there. Oh, we, ha- we will. We ha- uh, oh, my God. If Louis anybody Aregis. ever saw us play music on Murfreesboro Road yeah. at Louis Aregis's. At the Aregis. That's where you, that's where you get your, your soul from. Play a few months it. on Murfreesboro Road. Wow. <laughs> but that was it. That the only Mexican restaurant was La Fiesta. It was. On Murfreesboro Road. And then and then there was a rumor of this place, Jose's, downtown. Like, Jose's open. Oh, wow. Well, he had a room where he would do private dinners. That's what it was. That's how he started, yeah. And then it but changed. Then El, but El Palenque changed the whole game. El Palenque on Nolensville Road? Nolensville Road. And first. Las Palmas on Antioch Las Palmas. The, the first one. Wow. And that changed the game. I mean, I discovered what mole was. And oh. Oh, once, you, once you go mole, you don't go back. You know? Yeah. No. That's what they say. Yeah. <clears throat> so speaking of Latin, uh, what do you say we, uh, we pop in a little... Uh... We came across this song uh, yeah. on a Chucho Valdez recording, which was so cool. But this is a, I do believe this is a Cuban standard called La Comparsa, which means the crew, the gang, the band oh, wow. sort of, you know.
Barsa. <laughs> Yeah, that's a heck of a song. It's a little more difficult than Spanish Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> or Spanish Harlem. Or <laughs> Spanish Rice. Or it's a good one, though. Ah, it's one of my favorites. Hey, what do you say we... Uh, see, we have Engineer Scotty here, and he knows everything about technology. And we he had does. Some, we had some questions, and I thought we could, we could ask Scotty. The Ask Scotty segment. The segment. Scotty, are you... <laughs> He's like lurch, you rang. Um, so, um, I, Scotty, I had a question about phasing. Now, if you're running a stereo feed and you take one side out of phase, first question is what happens to it, and the second question is is there any benefit to it? Taking one side out of a out of phase in a stereo feed. I have a question for you, Scotty. What phases you <laughs> personally? Personally, no, personally, list your number one, number one, any John, doesn't have to be music, go go where you have to go, this is your chance. Yeah. Yeah, what phases you, man? Right? He's been steeled. <laughs> oh! He's, <laughs> yeah, you right? Can, you are steeled That's to the good. process. That's good. Okay, here's a more important question, Scotty, are you ready? Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh, uh, you had you had to go there. I had to go there. I That's, had to ask. You know, it's that, Ask Scotty. That, so, <laughs> absolutely not. No, that, no, that's no. an insult to my people. No, yeah, I, that's that's close. Pineapple is delicious. It is delicious with the, with the pizza. You know, it's like ooh. that's like ketchup, ketchup, and 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 honey. You know, it just yeah. Uh, what was a bologna and whipped cream? That was <laughs> that was a Stooges. Stooges were bologna and whipped cream, ketchup and honey. Oh boy! Um, but uh, hey, uh, would you uh, would you go out with a little? Yeah. Off with some uh, sort of bebop kind of standard. Uh... Let's see. Oh, oh, oh! What is this?
Oh, oh, that's so nice. Well, oh. that was a fun hour, Jay. Thank Pensacola, you. here we come. <laughs> here we go, man. Shuck them and suck them. Come on. Oh. Uh, our hour is up. Oh, man, that was fast. We're going back to the pier. Yeah. Our lifeboat is done its job for this week I'd like to thank Jay for Jay's recording Jay's place recording here in Nashville, Tennessee I'd like to thank Mr. Jonathan Yutkin with his insanity insanity, insanity. and our engineer Scotty thank you Scotty you still there man engineer Scotty Scotty uh, so I don't want it to end uh, but we're going to have guests and all kinds of crazy surprises kind of like we did tonight so thank you so much for joining us and uh we'll this will be our, our closing theme uh, take us all back Ooh. show me the way to go home oh show it jimmy i'm tired and i want to go to bed i've been playing all night long man i had a little drink about an hour ago a little cold job. and it's gone straight <laughs> to my duck time oh everywhere that i roam over land or sea or foam you can always hear me singing a song show me the way to go So good night from us all. Take care. Be safe. Join us back on the lifeboat next week. Good night.